Hi everybody. Hope you're well. I have to be honest, I'm pretty horrible. <laughs> I've had a headache for a couple days. It's like neighbor kid starts on his four-wheeler in the morning and he doesn't just drive it. He goes room, 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 you know. And uh, then when that ends, it's shooting time. Well, this morning was shooting time and my dog started crying early, really high-pitched. And um, I think it's squirrel killing season or ducks or whatever they're killing out there. And then it goes into the, um, uh, we got to kill all the deer and all the pheasants and grouse around here. And I mean, to eat a squirrel, I had a pet squirrel and a pet pheasant and a pet deer. It's like, this is just like, um, no offense to anybody, I love living out in the country, but this, there's so many people around now. I feel like I'm living in backwoods, hillbilly hell, literally hell. So, yeah, I don't know how anybody else around here can stand it. <laughs> the people that live here, I want to move, not just because of that, but that plays a major role in it, it really does. My dog wakes up crying. She wakes every, well, she wakes me up. She, nothing wakes up uh, the devil, <laughs> you know. That sucker. Um, oh, yeah, he's awake. <laughs> but, yeah. Man. And then a friend of mine thinks I'm shit because uh, I'm down on not misguided people, but demons. Literal Satanistic demonistic and I don't call um any fallen angel you're not fallen you were kicked out so um and they think that they're gonna breed more of them and get back in don't work like that we kicked you out we were bad then and there's more of us now and we'll we're worse now so they can poop me out, but they can't get me down. They can't take God out of my heart. Even though I did feel like beating my dog's ass, I didn't. But I did yell out the window at my dog, kind of, at the neighbor. So. You want me to beat your ass? <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I think I said, uh. This is freaking hillbilly hell, and I shut my window most of the way. You know, it's like, and they know me too. They're, you know, that's the one that, um, he was over in my yard, wouldn't say a word to me in front of Doug, but would stop and ask me if I want to ride when I'm walking on my road, you know? So, yeah. It's like, whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah, it's pure fucking hell. Um, I gotta move. <laughs> I always say I'm not gonna spend another winter here, and then I do so. Because I know wherever I go, I mean, number one, they've made it uh, basically physically possible for me to do anything long term. And um, everything, everything comes into play no matter where I go. So, yeah. And a person shouldn't have to lose equity in something they worked hard for, too. So if I walked, I'd be like it would be abandoning. But ah, whatever. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I, um, I'm 60. I always said when I'm 60, I hate that number anyway. And um, I'll make something good happen in my life this year. I'm not putting up with this Satanistic shit no more. So... Oh, yeah, that's what I was saying, and a friend thinks I'm total piece of crap because um, I'm down on people. I'm not down on regular people at all. I, they always got a chance. You know, it's the people that want us dead that I'm down on. So it has nothing to do with your normal, everyday, average Joe. If he was a thief or a drug addict or him or her or whatever or... If we were little, we used to lie, and I would sometimes, but then I got to where even if I had to have my ass beat, I'd tell the truth, and it was hard to do, but 
I would get beat for telling the truth. <laughs> so, um, and that is truly narcissistic, you know. Um, okay, I'm not going to go into poor me. I was talking about my adoptive family yesterday, and just about an hour ago, I started talk, thinking about when my brother, the child molesting, had charges pressed on him, and it's still, like, pending, like, um, 40 years later. And I'm not kidding. This is all... Um, Look up Wallace Williams, C-A-L-I-N, Jr., J-R, and you will see that he was charged but did no time for a rape of a kid. And my adopted mom's like, oh, he was just about a young man, Barbara, and you don't know what you're talking about. And I go, 17 years old is not a young man. If 17-year-olds were uh, able to have sex with 30 and 40 year olds at that time or whatever, then they would be of legal age to marry. I said, and besides being pedophile and gay, I go, get real. I said, but that's okay with you. And I'm not a good enough daughter, you know, that type of thing. So, and I was, I bent over back. I was a slave. I worked hard. But, uh, through the abuse. So that's why I act like I do now. It's like I like I told Doug, he goes like, well, he couldn't build that um, car for it with no help. And I said, the reason why I don't, you know, because I get no credit for what I do. So, and I can frame. I can, I can do all kinds of stuff. Grinders, drills, weld, changing my own tires, oil, working on cars. I do it all. I've roofed, I've laid concrete, literally dug my own pool by hand, 13 foot deep oval, um, and then, uh, um, oh, it was about 12 foot around. So I started digging it on a Mother's Day. I ended up filling it in because it was so dang cold and we would have needed a heater. Well, I, I dunked dug and he didn't like it, so. I was going to pick them back out. I picked them back out. For God's sake, it was funny. You know, one of them funny dunks, like not mean, but and he freaked because he's always had this um, premonition or whatever about going off the road and dying in his car, you know, not being able to get out. So, And if I was rotten to people, he's not rotten to people like him. He's rotten to people that have God in their heart. And um, you can't prove it type of thing, you know, and they all hang together. So, yeah, if I was like that, I would be worried about going off the road, too. You know, for me, I know I would roll down the window and let the water come in and swim out, you know. But everybody else, they're also worried about break. Oh, yeah, that's right, electric windows. Well, I guess you have to have one of them breaker things. Well, or whatever. <laughs> Close my eyes and go to sleep. I've almost drowned. Well, one time I got cramps in the water. And I literally did sink and I floated back up to the top. And that was the year that I got attacked and... um probably did something to me, but I had, um, dove off a deep, deep side of the dock and, uh, really, really deep, cold, um, lake with springs under, ground springs coming in a real dangerous, um, lake and, uh, yeah, and I floated back up to the top and another time I did like a 30 foot free dive and when I was coming back up, I got a little bit dizzy and, um, and then I used to sink like a canoe in 20 foot of water when I was taking my training <clears throat> in lifeguarding and um, boating, all kinds of stuff <clears throat> at camp. 
we sunk our canoes 20 feet in the water and then resurfaced them in case, you know, just to show you how to do it. And I've done it many, many times now. I used to do it just to <clears throat> take somebody out canoeing and show them how to do that. Maybe in not that deep of water. Sometimes it was like six foot or, yeah, depending on the person and what they deserve, literally. You know, stick them out in the middle of the lake and sink their lifeline. <laughs> That's a little funny if somebody's treating you poorly. <laughs> so anyway, I just kind of dunked them, and I was going to hug them when I was done. But it was like freezing in there and stuff in our pool. And so he didn't like it anymore, and he was pretty much done with that. <laughs> so I spent a summer, well, two summers, cleaning it and taking care of it and sort of wading around in it. But it was pretty freezing. He wouldn't get a heater then or participate in helping me do anything. And I'll just give you a scenario. I mean, not only being kept awake at night when I was trying to study for uh, college, but I had this primo job in town at Pomida Cashier. And uh, the best benefits around, it was better than Wally World. It was like a little, little hometown in pharmacy and so I had this primo job and he comes out in one of the hot rods and sat in the parking lot revving his motor to pick me up and the women there they're like I think that's your husband out in the parking lot and I'm like I wasn't gonna swear so I'm not gonna swear um mother M F -er, I'm thinking <laughs> you know um, yeah, so that was enough of participating <clears throat> momentarily in this place, so, but yeah, I used to do that a lot, young, <clears throat> oh, and I had another primo job, but the place closed down, it was a country store, by where I live a mile away over by the lake and I'd zoom to work and um, zoom back home and just the less time that it took to smoke a cigarette it was so nice and we sold a well we rented VCRs at the time and sold a bait um, minnows and worms and gas and groceries and you know so yeah that was a good job but anyway, um, that wasn't so bad because he was still working out of the house, and a lot of times I'd be, uh, I'd be, uh, all different hours. So that was kind of okay, but I don't know. Like I say, as far as trying to study for any school or do anything normal or keep my strength to um, work hard or whatever it is. Um, there's, it's everyday occurrences to hinder me. So that's what gang stalking is. And then when you get a group of them things together, they can really do a number on you. So yeah, people mad at me because I got people that do this, not just to me, but you can tell the people that are tortured, obviously. Look at us, <laughs> you know. So we have gotten a hurt and we're angry. Some of us are, I mean, forgiving and loving. Oh, that's what I was going to say. So I was thinking about Wally. And then he also, um, I wanted to charge him for doing that to my son. But my ex took my son across state lines and would not bring him in for the court date and convinced him not to do it because they had been lovers so um yeah i've been through some shit and even more than that but that's just some of it so anyway i was thinking about the <clears throat> creep today when he was little how he used to get hurt and i almost started crying so i mean it's not like i'm just hateful in my life and i don't forgive but it's that i'm not letting it go for god this is not about vengeance for me this is not about um, revenge. This is not about hate. 
this isn't about treating any normal human being like dirt at all, ever. You can do a lot of terrible things in front of me. I'll probably, I, I live life kind of like baseball. I mean, I've gotten things a little more short-tempered, honestly. But I three strikes, you're out. But pretty much now I'm down to one. If you, I mean, if you do something against God's law that is so unfixable, something like that. You know, depending on who you are and what side you are, you know, that's it. I like, I, I can't stress enough, I'm not. I'm not even hating on my brother. I asked him to go to counseling with me. You know, this is not just a gay man. This is a pedophile. You know, and I asked all of them to go to um, counseling with me. And they wouldn't do it. So, I mean, I give people opportunities. And when I see people that act like them and I recognize that, I'm not going to forgive. That is not forgivable. You can't let people kill people little pieces at a time every day that you can't prove, but God sees. And this is what I'm talking about. Whether it's doctrine leading you wrong, read wrong, whether it's um, life coaches, not teaching you the right way. I mean, they may be sweet as all hell. So, um, supposedly, you know, but it doesn't take uh, watching somebody for 10 years to destroy you. It takes one bad word, one bad sentence one bad person you know so if somebody's misled that's forgivable that's why I, I guess what i'm trying to say and that that's for god to judge but in my life personally i have a right to judge who i let in my life and what type of person if i see them doing something wrong i have a right to speak on that and obligation so if somebody thinks I'm just crappy and cold and mean and cruel and it's nothing like that at all, uh, you, you couldn't be more wrong, further from the truth. So. So. Yeah, I know now, I mean, you know, and people learn in stages, and this friend that I'm talking about in particular, he knew I directed something at him, and he directed this really shitty video at me this morning with two little piles of shit in the sense, too. Um, it's like, well, okay, I understand. And then by, by about oh, halfway through the day, God must have been talking to him, or he does hear me think, too. So it's like, yeah, okay. So then he's like, well, he can't be mean to pieces of you. You know, that's, but see, that's not it. They were ahead of me with their cruelty. So they overtook the situation and made it. They can, I stay silent because when I say stay silent, God said this is how they mess up because when they transfer that energy, and try and bounce it back off of me, my silence remains. So whenever they try to be quiet, that area, that same wave is like a quiet interruption and unnatural. So when I remain silent for a long, long time, it became apparent where the noise came from and that type of electronics in the mind, in the soul of the people. So God just said, be silent like that, <laughs> you know. But this is time to speak up. So, yeah. Some of you know, but I told you before, but I've been online literally about 20 years, um, big time, contacting the CDC, how they messed me over and printing out my paperwork that they lied about and hid and all kinds of shit. 
and I got copies of that, physical copies. So, um, yeah, all kinds of things. Um, yeah, and I'm one of them that contacted, like, my um, state legislature and talked to them about different things, you know, and issues and, you know, environmental things and, like, uh, um, birding stuff. It really bothered me when they built our stadium here in Minnesota. It's nothing but glass and it's in the pathway of the migrating birds, the songbirds. So yeah, way to kill all of them. I have this baby, or it's not a baby, a hummingbird that visits me every year. I have never seen a hummingbird sit on a fence except for about a week ago. It came flying right up in front of me and sat on the fence in front of me. I'm like, whoa, that is far too cool. But it'll fly right up to the window and like wave at me. Just, yeah. And when I'm outside, it like flies by me and, <laughs> and around my head. And, <laughs> you know, it's really cool. And I have morning doves that show off and robins that show off. I go, baby, and like, it depends on how many is here. But if there's a yard full of like 200 of them, they'll come bouncing up to the sound of my voice. And, you know, yeah, I literally talked these songbirds that came from New York. They let them out of cages there. They were tropical birds, and they were here for about two or three years, and I convinced them to head west, southwest. I'm like, you got to go that way or you're going to freeze to death here, you know. And they didn't want to for a couple of years, but there's no nothing to eat. And they're little, I call them um, fluffy things, like fluffy birds. They were little puffkins. They looked like little balls of fur little black birds just the cute and whole flocks of them would follow me down to my mailbox and back up and I kept talking to them and then finally they left and I told them it was just about winter time about six weeks away I go you guys got to get out of here you know and they finally did so and oh that's another thing that happened funny today um Doug had come home from town and uh went back in his shop, but he was telling the chicken, you got to get out of here. And he closed the door and the chicken, I could hear. I'm like, whoa. And they pick up language really quick too. So I'm like, wow. <laughs> she literally <laughs> swore. <laughs> I'm funny. Yeah. I had a rabbit that would look right at you. He was a house bunny and he looked right at you his cage was open he could do whatever he wanted and he'd go he said that to Doug all the time he never said it to me he was my bunny <laughs> so. but yeah he was a character took him to the vet one time the vet said he was going to die from urinary tract infection I thought yeah right Pony bastard, so I um, got some penicillin and um, vitamins, crushed him up, all kinds of made a little bunny concoction. What I knew his um, with folic acid, what I knew his body would need. I'd take some of his food and kind of smoosh it up in a little vitamin and um, force fed him. I'd give him his medicine first, then I'd force feed him with the dropper. And then I'd get some water with a dropper in them. And then I'd sit there and pet him back to sleep. And I did that um, two times a night. I took care of my son's um, pit bull like that, too. He got shot by a neighbor. So. Yeah, he jumped the fence. My son was teaching him how to jump a nine-foot cattle panel. I'm like, don't do that. You're endangering him. And sure enough, the dog jumped and went and got shot. And he lived for about, oh, I think two years after that. I think his sutures broke from the inside. They literally shoot him, shot him from the back of his testicles. One of them came off right up through his back. 
and uh, he lived through it for about a year. We thought he was going to be okay, and he seemed okay, you know. But I had to hold him, literally hold him together for almost an hour. I had dog blood on me. And when I got to the bed, I told Doug, I need some help. And he just kind of sat there, and I, like, let go for a minute because I had been holding him the whole time in the car and everything. And then I grabbed his hand and made him put pressure, and he didn't want to. And I'm, like, making him. You know, to give my arms a break, and I'm like, uh, like you gotta tell them they gotta hurry up here, you know. So, yeah, I've been through some shit. That's ugh, unbelievable. Oh. But yeah, <laughs> just thought I'd get on here and tell you. Without being fake at all, I can't tell you I'm having the greatest day. I'm, I'm, not, I'm still thankful for life, but, um, you know, it's rough. It gets hard. It does. Some of us are very deserving of some peaceful days and some lovely days, some la laughy days. You know, not the fake laughter, but the real loving, Christian, clean type of funny laughter that we all deserve like that, you know? Um, yeah, so, I mean, life's not god-awful, god-awful, but it could be way, 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 way better. <laughs> And I just needed a lot of people to know that I'm really not cold-hearted at all. I'm doing what God tells me to do. You know, as gently as I can say it, and as nicely as I can put it to whoever I'm speaking to. Now, like I say, if I'm talking to a demon, I'm not talking to you as... Um, Barb, I'm talking to you as uh, just as demonistic as you are. If you want to go there, you want to hurt God's kids, well, you cross the wrong person type of thing, you know. So I have that for that reason. I can't, what can I say? God made me for a reason, evidently, because I've been me for a long, long time. <laughs> and... I'm not misguided in any extreme. So that is a big difference. And I've never been guided by Satan. Never. Not one day. Interfered, yes. But guided, no. Uh-uh. No. That'll never happen. You know, they can talk about... Um, 5G and Schumann resident, resident, nymphs, and um, the food, the air, whatever they can try and do, but they cannot turn my soul into inhuman. So, no matter what, you know, would they think when, uh, God made Satan that he gave all his demon shit away. <laughs> you know? No, he saved a little sprinkle for his kids that were going to be hurt for end times. And that little sprinkle was the best. He saved the best for last. Okay, everybody, I love you very much. It's almost a half hour. I'll see if I'll be back. I just had a need to let a lot of my new subs know um, precisely who I am and some of my older ones and friends to let you know that I'm not just cold-hearted. I'm not talking to normal people when I'm getting down on your bad shit whoever you are, you bad guys, 
you're the ones I'm talking to and everybody else needs to know how I'm talking to the bad guys and why. And that's, that is from God, with God in my heart. So, and this is after being extremely tortured bad for a long time now. Um, especially since I've been on YouTube and made friends of the same mindset. Um, I think they stepped it up on all of us. So. And it hurts, I have to admit it hurts, but when we get our payback, our, and that, that is revenge, yeah, but it's going to put an end to nobody ever having to go through that again. So, and we've all had a little taste of it. This is from God now. You've all had a little taste of it. So imagine every day, all day long, all night long, because you're the opposition. Not just a tiny taste, but a whole entire life of it. That is truly not on the fence. So when I'm angry, this is my right, my God-given right. It's not about forgiving demons. Forgiving people, yeah, yes, absolutely. Really not my thing, but absolutely for you guys. <laughs> you know, when God tells me, I will and I do. And it's just like I had an argument with a lady. Um, you know, I don't didn't don't like the sheep thing. I don't like the wake. It's a decision. It's I mean, um, yeah, everybody's decision. I'm be probably back tomorrow. Um, talking about repentance, and I believe that we've already been through Judgment Day, and that's why everybody's so nuts. So. Anyway, peace and love from Pine City, Minnesota, and um, I love you all, and the ones that make videos, um, most likely I'm watching YouTube, so hi, good night, yeah.